blessed be the God of our salvation. Praying together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God on
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both humans and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you, You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in a remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Santo Evangelio de Nuestro Señor Jesucristo según Juan. Era antes de la fiesta de la Pascua. Y Jesús sabía que había llegado la hora de que Él dejará este mundo para ir a reunirse con el Padre. Él siempre había amado a los suyos que estaban en el mundo, y así los amó hasta el fin. El diablo ya había metido en el corazón de Judas, hijo de Simón Iscariote, la idea de traicionar a Jesús. Jesús sabía que había venido de Dios, que iba a volver a Dios y que el Padre le había dado toda autoridad. Así que mientras estaban cenando, se levantó de la mesa, se quitó la capa y se ató una toalla a la cintura. Luego echó agua en una palangana 
y se puso a lavar los pies de los discípulos y a secárselos con la toalla que llevaba a la cintura. Cuando iba a lavarle los pies a Simón Pedro, este le dijo, Señor, ¿tú me vas a lavar los pies a mí? Jesús le contestó, Ahora no entiendes lo que estoy haciendo, pero después lo entenderás. Pedro le dijo, Jamás permitiré que me laves los pies. Respondió Jesús, Si no te lo lavo, no podrás ser de los míos. Simón Pedro le dijo, Entonces, Señor, no me laves solamente los pies, sino también las manos y la cabeza. Pero Jesús le contestó, El que está recién bañado no necesita lavarse más que los pies, porque está todo limpio. Y ustedes están limpios, aunque no todos. Dijo, no están limpios todos, porque sabía quién lo iba a traicionar. Después de lavarles los pies, Jesús volvió a ponerse la capa, se sentó otra vez a la mesa y les dijo, ¿Entienden ustedes lo que les he hecho? Ustedes me llaman Maestro y Señor, y tienen razón, porque lo soy. Pues si yo, el Maestro y Señor, les he lavado a ustedes los pies, también ustedes deben lavarse los pies unos a otros. Yo les he dado un ejemplo para que ustedes hagan lo mismo que yo les he hecho. Les aseguro que ningún servidor es más que su Señor y que ningún enviado es más que el que lo envía. Si entienden estas cosas y las ponen en práctica, serán dichosos. Ahora se muestra la gloria del Hijo del Hombre, y la gloria de Dios se muestra en Él. Y si el Hijo del Hombre muestra la gloria de Dios, también Dios mostrará la gloria de Él, y lo hará pronto. Hijitos míos, ya no estaré con ustedes mucho tiempo. Ustedes me buscarán, pero lo mismo que les dije a los judíos, les digo ahora a ustedes, no podrán ir a donde yo voy. Les doy este mandamiento nuevo, que se amen los unos a otros. Así como yo los amo a ustedes, así deben amarse ustedes los unos a los otros. Si se aman los unos a los otros, todo el mundo se dará cuenta de que son discípulos míos. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, 
and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Won't you join me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we come once again grateful to assemble together. We say thank you for your presence with us, your love towards us. It is once again that we ask that you might hold us, cover us, keep us. Most of all, fill us for the places that you are preparing to send us. This we ask in your wonderful name. Amen. May be seated. His hour had come. Four words lifted out of the opening sentence of our gospel. These four words provide a key foundational component for everything that will follow. For all who have been on this Lenten journey and all who may be gathered here this evening, even for those who are joining and connecting with us online, we hear these words, his hour had come. These words invite an opportunity to question and reflect upon all that is taking place in the present moment, all that came before that moment, and everything that will unfold, unfold over the next few days. His hour had come. Jesus knew that it was time to depart the world and to go to his Father. 
The hour had come when he would transform the Passover meal into a sacramental moment, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, communion. The hour had come when Jesus would face betrayal. He would take on the responsibility of completing the work he had been given to do by his Father. Jesus did this knowing that he had only a few days left to live. His 33 years of life were now down to just a few days. And while we may look at the brevity of his life, although his life was brief in duration, it is long in consequence. I recently read a quote that stated, the value of life is not in its duration, but in its donation. You are not important because of how long you live. You are important because of how effectively you live. I have a small New Testament Bible in my house that I keep that my father gave me a long time ago. And oftentimes I pull it out and I'm looking at its worn pages and being able to remember the words that he shared with me, but he inscribed in the cover of that Bible these words. Time is not measured by the years that you live, but by the deeds that you do and the joy that you give. Reading the gospel, it says his hour had come. And Jesus knew he was marching toward the cross and the grave. But while the cross and the grave were present in his mind, I am certain that his thoughts must have traveled down memory lane and considered the life he had lived. That going down memory lane, his mind probably passed through the moments thinking about the friends that he had made, the loved disciples who had followed him, the crowds who traversed many hills and mountains and valleys just to be with him. Perhaps he thought about the work he had done, the kindness and forgiveness he had shown, the love he ex had extended, and the helping hand he had offered, as he knew now that his hour had come. For just a moment, maybe his thoughts focused not on how he would die, but maybe for just a moment, he thought about how he lived. Even though there must have been dreaded anticipation for the evening's arrival, as Sunday's cheering crowd had dispersed, Judas, the disciple, had used the previous days before this moment as an opportunity to barter with plotting religious authorities to arrest him and take his life. He must have thought maybe for a moment not about how he would die, but he wrestled with how he lived. There are moments in time when we are all challenged to think not about how we will leave this place, but what did we do while we were in this space? There are moments in all, all of our lives when we come to face to face with the brevity of our life. And we think about the life that we have been given and perhaps the lives, the lives that we are living. Maybe we think about the ministries that we have connected to that we're carrying out, or even how during this life we are representing Jesus. Are our lives reflective of the manner Jesus lived his life? It was only a few years prior that Jesus stood and declared that he had been anointed to preach the good news to the poor that he had been sent to proclaim the release of the captives and the recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It was only just a few years ago. 
in this work and in this life. We have to think about his words and we must think about the commitments that we've made, the actions that we have taken. But throughout his life, Jesus kept marching toward what many of us spend our time running away from. When facing the reality of the cross and death, when the hour had come, Jesus made certain that his disciples would embrace a necessary component of discipleship. The hour had come, and as we go forth in his name, even on tonight, Jesus displayed during this sacramental moment a great and fundamental lesson on humility and service that should and must characterize all of his disciples, all those who are followers of Christ, and all who identify as Christian. It was on this evening that Jesus carried out the remarkable act, which was to, to demonstrate to all of his disciples the true spirit that had the power to win the world. Jesus picked up a towel, then he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. I remind you on tonight, before Jesus would ever pick up his cross, Jesus on this night picked up a towel. The disciples and generations to follow had heard and we still hear Jesus' invitation and challenge when he stated, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. It was during this moment that Jesus picked up the towel, poured the water in a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was around him. And perhaps we have not been able to pick up our cross because we have not yet comprehended or embraced the strength that's needed to pick up a towel. Before Jesus was ever lifted up, he knelt down on his knees. Before he was ever lifted up, he washed feet and comforted those who were in need. He humbled himself in order that we might serve others. He did not see this moment as optional, but he told his disciples that it was necessary, not only for his life, but necessary for their lives and the lives that they would live in the days to come. He told them, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do these things. Just as Jesus transformed the night, he gave them a powerful perspective by which to see the world. And I am reminded of a preacher I heard growing up, my neighborhood of Brooklyn, who would always lift and talk about how Jesus gave them a different perspective on that evening because we're always given to grading and judging others and judging ourselves not by the standard of what we do, but what we at some times don't do. Jesus focused on a positive morality, he would state. The key word was don't, was not don't, the key word was do. In his own words, as Jesus met with a a crowd gathering on a hillside in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not. But I say unto you, thou shalt. After the washing of the feet, not before. After the washing of the feet, not in advance. After the washing of the feet, it was after that Jesus told them, now the Son of Man is glorified. 
Jesus' words on this evening find a pointed conclusion. As Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, and that you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Do this, and the world will know you are my disciples. Do this in a world when crosses are worn, crosses are hung, crosses are draped in all kinds of places. All kinds of claims are being made with nationalistic motivations and elitist inclinations. Do this and the world will know you are my disciples. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, he says, it is then that they'll be able to recognize you. When the Son of Man is giving witness to who his real followers are, are it is then that they will be able to see who you really are. Because when I come in my glory, for I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Before he ever picked up a cross, he had the strength, he had the spirit to pick up a disciple, to pick up a towel. And by this, the world will know you are my disciples. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even by miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward, that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. Come remembering his admonition that what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you've taught us that what we do for the least of our sisters, brothers, and siblings, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Will you please stand if you were able? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. My friends, welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this holy night, this Monday Thursday or Mandatum Thursday, Commandment Thursday. Thank you for being with us and I hope you will join us on Good Friday. We have two services, one at 12 and one at 7, and then uh, we have a the great vigil on Saturday night at 8, and of course, Easter services. We're so thrilled to have you here today. And please know that the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, everyone is welcome to receive this evening. It does not matter which church you're affiliated with or whether you're affiliated with a church or not, it makes no difference. If you desire to, to eat at Christ's table, then please come forward and do so. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said it was more blessed to give than to receive.
The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, 
he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you. Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we might find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with our patrons, the apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who were called to his supper.
Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.
the agony in the garden. When they had sung the hymn, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the trial, time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <laughs> 